Well, hello, my friends. I hope you're doing well. I know these are unusual times. I know that these are times now that many really are not sure exactly what's going on. But I just wanted to, first of all, thank the Lord for giving me the opportunity to be able to stand. Some of you may or may not know, but it's been about a rough 16 weeks, had back surgery, and uh, the Lord is faithful. And I'm now standing, I'm behind in work, and there's a lot of things going on. But I just need a little bit of your time because I, I, I really need to share something with you. And as you can see from this image that is uh, as my background, this represents a story that I take really to heart because I, I know what it's like. As many of you know, I didn't have a relationship with the Lord until I was 31 years old. And uh, I did a lot of things that I just didn't know what I was doing. And now that I know what I know, and since 2001, I've been sharing God's word as he has led me, and I have not been live in quite some time, not because I didn't want to be, not because I couldn't be, but out of strict obedience. When the Lord tells me to speak, I speak. When he tells me to be quiet, I be quiet. So for many of you, you've been needing a message of encouragement because of all the things that are going on, and I know it's kind of confusing, and I know there's a lot of things you don't know, but I know one thing is for sure, who is in control? Okay, And I know that you might not be aware of who's in control. Maybe people have told you you need to blame Satan or whatever you've been taught. I, I just need you to know that today, right now, as you're hearing my voice, know that God, your creator, the one who brought you into this earth and who has carried you and will continue to carry until the work that he has completed in you is finished. So for those of you that have been a little bit concerned or frustrated or not even sure about really what's going on, let me give you some words of encouragement. Let me share with you scripture, because see, if you just listen to me, my words are nothing, but his word never returns void, always goes out in a manner in which he sent it. I need to start this morning specifically, well, let's see, it's noon now, so we're now in the afternoon, in the book of Numbers. Chapter 22, starting at verse 21. And some of you know that I have a sense of humor, so just know that everything I do has a purpose. So Balaam arose in the morning and saddled his donkey and went with the leaders of Moab. But God was angry because he was going, and the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as an adversary against him. He was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand, the donkey turned off from the way and went into the field. But Balaam struck the donkey to turn her back into the way. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path of the vineyards with a wall on the side and a wall on that side, when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she pressed herself to the wall and pressed Balaam's foot against the wall, so he struck her again. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn to the right or to the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she lay down under Balaam. So Balaam was angry and struck the donkey with a stick. Here we go. Pay close attention here. <clears throat> and the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey. And she said to Balaam, what have I done to you that you have struck me these three times? Now, let me stop right here. If all of a sudden you're at a field and your donkey starts talking to you, I would think you would be a little bit concerned about this, but obviously there was no concern here. So let's keep going. Then Balaam said to the donkey, because you made a mockery of me, if there had been a sword in my hand, I would have killed you by now. And the donkey said to Balaam, and I am not your donkey on which you've ridden all your life to this day. Have I ever been accustomed to do so to you? And he said, no. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand. And he bowed all the way to the ground. Now, why would I share that? I'm sharing that to you because if God can make a donkey talk, guess what? He's got a message for you today, and he's going to use me to give it to you, and you can choose to hear it and then advance from it or ignore it. The choice is yours. I believe we live in a country where we can say and do what we want, right? Hmm. 
Well, let's turn to Matthew now, because this is really what my message, and I'm almost done, was all about. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 8. And we're going to start at verse 25. And we're going to read through 27. And they came to him saying, save us, Lord, we're perishing. And he said to them, and he said to them, why are you timid, you men of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and it became perfectly calm. And the men marveled, saying, what kind of a man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? This is the creator we're talking about. He's in the boat with them, and they're freaking out. So are you freaking out? Okay, maybe you don't know he's in the boat. Maybe you just need a little reminder that he is with us, and he is in complete control. So no matter what goes on right now, don't panic. Please do not panic. One more, Ephesians. Chapter 2. Now, I did not write this, so please let me just say before I share it, I didn't write this. It's not me, okay? It's not me. It's just his words. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For by grace you have been saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift a gift of God. Gift means it's something you can't work for. Otherwise, it's not a gift. It's a reward because you did something. But 2,000 years ago when he died, we had nothing to do with it. That's why it's by grace that you've been saved through faith. Not a result of works that no one should boast. My message is very simple. And my message is this. If you look at this image behind me, this image behind me goes into things that most people either have never read before or were never taught really what this meant. And if we go back to Numbers 21, and this is it, I promise. I know everybody's busy and has a lot of things, but I want you to be encouraged. Numbers 21. And we're going to read to verse 9. When the Canaanite, verse 1, when the Canaanite, the king of Arad, who lived in the Negev, heard that Israel was coming by the way of Athriel, then he fought against Israel and took some of them captive. So Israel made a vow to the Lord and said, If thou wilt indeed deliver this people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. And the Lord heard the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites. Then they utterly destroyed them in their cities. Thus the name of the place was called Horma. Then they set out from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Eden, and the people became impatient because of the journey. Are you like me in getting impatient? I mean, I do. I was on my back for 14 weeks. I literally could barely go to the bathroom. You want to talk about, and my friend Coach Meyer, his wife, in the very beginning said, I have a word for you. It's from the Lord. He said, wait on the Lord. So while all these weeks were going by, wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord. I'm like, I want to get up and out of here. I got work to do. Three days before my back went out, I bought a new mattress and I joined a band. We have now been able to enjoy the band. I have been able to enjoy the mattress because I was stuck in it. But here's my point. Watch this. And the people spoke against God and Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food, no water, and we loathe this miserable food. Here we go. And the Lord. Now notice, he prefaces there, and the people spoke against God and Moses. So here we go. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. 
So the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned because we've spoken against them. See, they knew this. They knew. Many people act like we don't know. We know when we make a mistake. We know what pleases God and what doesn't. But we all fall short. You, me, everybody. So be patient. He may remove the serpents from us. And Moses interceded to the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, make a fiery serpent and set it on a standard. And it shall come about that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, he shall live. And Moses made a bronze serpent and set it to the standard. And it came about that if the serpent bit any man, when he looked the bronze serpent, he lived. My friends, you see, if you look at the serpent, you live. Keep your eyes on the Lord and don't quit.